state space systems present us with an interesting problem that you don't see in transfer functions, and that's the idea of controllability and later something called observability. In controllability, we are concerned with whether the states of the system can be changed with the input. Let me show you an example. Here is a system that's second order. There is an input and an output relationship. The two states correspond to x0, x1, and the system has two poles or two eigenvalues, and we can tell right away because the system's diagonalized that the system has a pole at minus two and a pole at minus one. Look what happens to the system, though. Because the system has been diagonalized, the states have been decoupled. And so we essentially have two state equations. One, x0 dot is equal to minus two x0. First order differential equation, but no input. The second one, x1 dot is equal to minus one x1 plus u. So if we put an input u in, we can change the values of state one, but we can't do anything to state zero. The output, however, is affected by state zero and state one. It's the combination of the two. So in this system, we would say that the states are not controllable. No matter what we do to u, we can't affect what happens to x zero. So we would say that this system is not controllable. If we had a system that was similar, but now the value here is no longer zero, but some value I've put two in here. Now the system is completely controllable because by selecting u, we can change the values of x0 and x1. And so we'd say that this system is controllable. A system is controllable if the input can affect each state of the system. We are going to look at two tests for controllability. The first test is to diagonalize a system and look at the B matrix. This is what I did in the previous example. Here's another example. Here is a system that's been block diagonalized. So it has eigenvalues at minus two and a complex eigenvalue at minus four plus or minus five i. This system is controllable because u can affect the state corresponding to minus two eigenvalue and u can affect this block even though there's a zero right here, this two affects this bottom state and it's coupled to the state above it. So again, this system is controllable. Here is a system that has two inputs, u1 and u2. In this case, state one that corresponds to the minus one is controllable only through u1. u1 corresponds to this column and you can see that u1 does not affect the second state. u2, on the other hand, will control both states because both elements in the B matrix are non-zero. It's also possible to have a situation where u1 would control only the first state and u2 would control only the second state. In that case, the system would still be controllable as long as we were allowed to use both inputs. The second test for controllability is to calculate what's called the controllability matrix. That's that value right there. So the controllability matrix is made up of the B matrix, then A times B, then A squared times B, and so on. And it really doesn't matter how many of those you have, but you really only need the same number of columns as corresponds to the order of the system. Then you calculate the rank of this. The rank is the number of linearly independent rows or columns, and that rank must be equal to n, where n is the order of the system. Let's do an example. In this example, I have a system which is diagonalized. It's the example I did previously, and we can tell right away that the answer should give us an uncontrollable system. But let's go ahead and crank through the algebra here. So I set up B which is right here, and then this is a, b, and then I could continue on a squared b, but this is only a second order system, so I only need two columns and rows in this system. Now continue on with the matrix multiplication, and we can see right away that the controllability matrix does not have a full rank because we have two zeros here. So this, we do not have linearly independent rows and columns. That is, we could multiply this first column by minus one and get the second column. By the way, another way to test for full rank is to check the determinant of the controllability matrix. And if that is zero, then the system does not have full rank. 
Let's look at one more example using the controllability matrix. Here's the example that we have before, and it's a third order system, and I picked this one because we know what the answer is, but let's see what the controllability matrix gives us. So after a, a lot of matrix algebra, I calculate the controllability matrix is this value right here. And now we need to know what is the rank of this system and what we're really interested in knowing is, does it have full rank? That is, is it singular? So the simple test is just to calculate the determinant of the system. And the determinant of the system turns out to be 580. It's non-zero, which means that this system indeed is invertible, which means it's full rank, which means that the system is completely controllable through the input U. Controllability is important when we want to be able to affect all the states of the system and we want to design a controller where the input is U. If the system is non-controllable, it means that no matter what control system we come up with, we will not be able to affect some of the internal states of the system with our controller that goes through U.